Twilight took the cup of tea with her magic and smiled at her host, sitting on the balcony. And how is your library going, Belle? she asked, enjoying this most quiet loop as Gaston was already taken care of. Quite well, she replied, watching his chip, the curse broken a long time ago, walked off to Mrs. Potts to place the chipped cup down on the tray and left the two loopers alone. Thank you, Chip. And how is Adam? Twilight asked, reminding herself that he had a name and tended to prefer it. Busy, she said, shaking her head with a smile on her face. The job he got keeps him away at times, but he does enjoy it greatly. Oh, is he working with the government as he is a prince? Twilight asked with Belle, just laughing softly as she shook her head in the negative. No, it's... There was a sudden whoosh next to them with a blinding light as a massive figure towered over them in a form-fitting green outfit with a lantern symbol on the chest. Twilight's eyes blinked as the light concentrated on a massive finger only for the body to slim down to that of a human body before Prince Adam gave Belle a tender kiss. Okay, when did you become a Green Lantern? Twilight asked, raising an eyebrow. When we had a fused loop with Sora in the Lantern Corps, Adam answered as he joined them, his Green Lantern ring next to his wedding ring. It was Belle's idea to use my beast form when I'm on duty it has to differentiate myself from the human lanterns, and it is a bit intimidating, so criminals are more inclined to listen to me. That makes sense, Twilight said. Though, and no offense, I thought you would be a yellow lantern, if anything. Well, they tried to recruit me at one point, Adam replied, and if I hadn't been awake then, I might well have let them. Fortunately, I already knew better. Belle smiled at her husband, placing her hand on his. Besides, even before you were awake, you'd already be qualified for the Green Lanterns, she turned back to Twilight. In Sora's loops, when the Heartless captured me and swallowed our world, Adam's heart was strong enough to let him survive and travel through the darkness without being corrupted, so that he could follow me to Hollow Bastion, she explained. That took a lot of world power, and that was enough to call one of the Green Lantern rings to him while he was there. Twilight smiled. I see, she said. Got any stories to share? Well, I'm pretty sure I ran into someone from one of your worlds out there earlier. Adam told her. She was a member of the Indigo tribe, one of the cores that are less than popular amongst the others. Twilight looked confused. Indigo? Aren't they the ones who rely on compassion? Yes. Adam looked grim. The thing is, on their own, the Indigo rings do search out people who are naturally compassionate, like Grey Palmer, the Atom. But the majority of the Indigo tribe are unrepentant sociopaths who had compassion forced onto them by the original controllers of the rings. If they're made to take up the ring against their will, it essentially brainwashes them into their new state. Their first bearer, Indigo One herself, was a self-centered murderer before the Indigo Light changed her into an almost emotionless being, and most of the other recruits were much better. Twilight looked troubled. That's disturbing, I know. Adam turned to Belle, who smiled up at him. So, who was it anyway? Twilight asked. Adam looked sheepish. Well, I didn't get her original name, but I can show you to her. He looked thoughtful for a moment before his ring lit up, showing an image of a woman in an indigo outfit. Studying her face, Twilight considered for a moment, and then she sighed. I shouldn't be surprised. You recognize her? Belle asked. Twilight nodded. That's Abacus Cinch. She was the principal of Crystal Prep Academy on the other side of the mirror until, well, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. None of the expansions had said exactly, but she doesn't work there anymore after what happened with my counterpart going temporarily mad with power during the friendship games. She looked disturbed. Cinch never got magic in our baseline, so she doesn't have being corrupted as an excuse. She just cares about keeping up her reputations and the schools, and doesn't care who gets hurt in the process. And she's perfectly willing to physically and emotionally blackmail her own students, including my own counterpart there, to make sure they did what she wanted. That's horrid! Belle gasped. Twilight nodded. I agree. I'm just glad Sunset is able to help Sai Twi turn back to normal and help her, even when she's not awake. No wonder how that woman wound up getting recruited by that core then, Adam growled. She's just the kind of person who needs some sense knocked into her. Not that I approve of how their core do it, of course. Twilight nodded. I fully understand, and I think whoever set things up like they did just 
didn't get the point of compassion if they're going to force it on someone. It has to be offered and accepted freely. She shook her head. But that's getting far away from what we were originally talking about. She looked troubled for a moment, then contemplative. Say, do you have any loopers from your branch besides the two of you yet? Not yet, Belle replied. I'm kind of surprised, actually. I keep hoping one of our other friends will activate soon, but it just hasn't happened. Of course, I've got friends among the other Disney princesses and other loopers. Ariel and the others are like sisters to me. But it'd be nice to have some of the household staff awake. And my father... Adam laid a hand on hers. It'll happen one of these days, he said softly. I'm surprised none of them have awoken yet. As close as... as close to you as they are. As close to you as they are. Though I'm not sure how well the Cogsworth would take it, actually, given how tightly wound he usually is. Pump fully intended, of course. Bell giggled at that. I will ask Snupnir if he can talk to your admin about it. Maybe there's some sort of snag? Twilight offered. Thank you, Bell told her with a smile. I really, really appreciate that. And so do I, Adam said. With that, the discussion turned to other things as Chip tilted his head, wondering when it would be appropriate to tell Bell that he knew about Yggdrasil from Mr. Uno already.